Hello and welcome to Chini Vision. This time it's one of the biggest games of the 1990s, Lemmings. I don't think there's many people today that aren't aware of the game that is Lemmings. It came out in 1991, programmed and designed by DMA Design, uh, later known as Rockstar North, who gave us um, GTA and all those other games, and published by Psygnosis. So starting off on my Amiga 1200, and I'm going to run through a few of the versions of Lemmings, and not can't do all of them, because Lemmings is probably one of the games that's been ported to the most systems ever. Um, you, you lose count. If, if there's a system there that was around in the early 90s, then there is a port of Lemmings for it, and, and subsequent systems as well. On the Amiga, you start off with an animation that sets the scene. Each Lemming can have a different skill, and we'll see what those are and you have to rescue a certain percentage. And lemmings will just walk in one direction until they are stopped. They can fall to their death or into traps incredibly easily. So the opening animation sets it up. You can see a block of lemming on the right there, then a climber lemming climbing up to the top there. And then we see the name of the game, Lemmings. All the levels were designed in deluxe paint on the Amiga, by the way, and by different people. Apparently lots of different people contributed. There's four different difficulty levels, each with... 25 levels i believe then we're just going to start off on just dig which is the level one of the easiest setting so off we go there's only one setting we can select and one lemming skill we can select on this level and it's dig so each of our lemmings can dig in fact only one of them needs to dig but i'm going to select them all all the tunes and lemmings will sound slightly familiar because they decided to use copyright free tunes to do all of the music so they're they're folk tunes they're christmas cows in some cases um it's designed so they couldn't be sued by anyone wouldn't have to pay any music royalties although why well, they couldn't have come up with some original tunes i don't know although there are original tunes in the game actually come to think of it so i think they probably because they needed so many tunes one more lemming to go into the exit there And each level has an access code, so you can skip forward to the place where you were. You don't lose lives, you just keep on being forced to repeat the same level over and over again until you can defeat it. Level 2 is simple again. All you've got to do is select Floater, and they will float down from the pillars there, because if the lemmings fall that distance, they will die. And you've got 10 lemmings to worry about here. Mouse control here on the Amiga, which is, is the best way to play the game um, you'll see on some of the other systems there are different control methods when mice aren't available which are more difficult to control so over on the ST now just to show you these initial two levels 10% to be saved I mean you can't fail you, you only need to save 10% of lemmings on this level but um, you can't fail graphics are exactly the same a few less colours and on to level 2, you just skip forward here. And yeah, the ST version is exactly the same as the Mega version, except with cut-down sound in cut-down colours. Uh, and that's about it, really. Over to the PC, running this on my Amstrad PC-2086. Lots of options when you're booting this up from floppy. I'm going for the VGA version. And you've got to select which PC you've got. We've got a PC compatible. Um, certainly don't have a high-performance PC. Um, and it's not a PC-1640 or 1512 because it's a PC-2086. So this is loading off a floppy. We're not going to have any sound, I'm afraid, because this machine has no sound card at all. Menu screen looks slightly crushed down from the ST and Amiga versions. Again, it's because it's running VGA, I suppose. You've got 56 less vertical pixels than the Amiga. And off we go. So far, it seems to be running at the same speed as the Amiga. The countdown clocks seem to be working accurately. Uh, the PC version supports mouse. I don't have a mouse. I'm playing this on keyboard. It's surprisingly playable on keyboard, actually. Although, what you'll notice with the PC, and we'll see this in some of the later levels, is slow down when you get a certain amount of lemmings on the screen. Now, this is due to my PC, because lots of PCs are different speeds. But if you've got an 8086 or a V30 processor, the kind of base spec for, I guess, what we'd call a modern inverted commas PC, 
Um, Lemmings does slow down a bit, and the scrolling can be a bit slow as well. Over the spectrum, and this was a surprise when it came out, and I saw this reported in your Sinclair, the first 8-bit version. When this came out, there was no guarantees of a Spectrum or Amstrad version, but the four levels of this were given away with your Sinclair, and I think Sinclair user as well. And it is two color because it has to be because the spectrums because the spectrum's graphics limitations are only two colors in each eight by eight pixel block so if you started adding more colors in here it would be fairly horrific with color clash use the number keys at the top of the keyboard to select which lem lemming you want because you can't move the cursor down to the bottom you have to select using those keys the shortcuts become fairly natural um, once you get used to where they are, you just stab at the number two key or number three key or what have you, and you know where you are. And there is no music on the version I'm showing here. I'm playing this on a Plus 2. The Plus 2 does have AY tunes on the 128K versions. I can't get the 128K version, well, I can't get it to run with music. So we're hearing it as a 48K Spectrum would hear it basically silent. Onto the Amstrad CPC. This version came out later, mid-1992. Bought my copy in the Bournemouth Amstrad Centre. I didn't have any expectation there would be an Amstrad version, but there was. It was £19.99 on disc. Expensive for an Amstrad disc game. Very nice graphics. A little bit slow. Decision to use mode 0 here on the Amstrad. They might have gone for something higher res. The Amstrad's mode 1 for colour mode in medium resolution, where the resolution would have approximately matched the ST and Amiga. Okay, in four colours, but no, we've got, we got chunky mode here on the Amstrad. Chunky pixels, no bad thing. There's still loads of character in those sprites. As I say, it's a, just a little bit slow, a little bit, just a little bit, but not, it's not a problem. It's still a very playable game on the Amstrad. And on these early levels, there really are not much differences between the versions. As you can see, this ostensibly is the same as the ST and Amiga. As it, in terms of the way it plays, uh, certainly when you on these earlier levels where there are not so many lemmings on the screen on any of the versions. Over the C64, this version came out in 1994. I mean, the C64 was pretty much commercially dead by the time this came out, but nevertheless, it did come out. Lovely opening animation here that the other 8-bit versions don't have, or the Amstrad and Spectrum certainly don't have. And you get the menu screen from the ST and Amiga versions, the Amstrad and Spectrum versions don't have this. So, so far, so good. A lot of disc swapping. This came on multiple discs. Even with a 1541 floppy emulator, this is a little bit of a faff. And off we go. Sid music. And the screen is very, very, very narrow. They've had to do this because the C64's sprite limitations. There's all sorts of coding tricks, which is part of the reason this game took so long to come out. Some external programmers produced this for Psygnosis. They put, sent them a demo and said, you want us to produce a version of Lemmings? And they did. On the C64, yeah, the, the number of Lemmings is cut down because of the sprite limitations. But you get 100 levels. The Spectrum and Amstrad versions only have 60. Uh, the original has 120. And the C64 apparently has 100 levels. Although that said, the reason it has 100 levels is because they've split it over multiple floppies. The Amstrad disc version is a two-sided, three-inch disc. There's no second disc in the box. With the C64, you have extra discs in the box. Over to the Sega Master System. Different tunes, and I'm told some of the levels vary significantly. And also, the amount of learning you need to save is considerably more generous than some of the other versions. I'm wondering if that was requested by Sega to make the game easier. I don't know. The graphics are really nice for the Mars system, really detailed, really colourful. And on level 2 you can see a big difference here. The screens are very crushed up and the pillars here are much lower. I mean, I haven't tried it, but could a lemming actually survive that fall there? Because it's so short without the umbrella, I don't, I, I don't really know, but it does seem incredibly short. You don't have the map on this version or the C64 version to move around the screen on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Um, which is a nice feature on the 16-bit versions. Over to the Mega Drive. You'd hope this would be identical to the Amiga version, but actual fact, it isn't. There, there are a few differences, and it seems to have been cut down possibly to fit onto a cartridge. 
the opening level is ostensibly the same. Another nice music from the Amiga version. It's still the same tune, but with the Mega Drive's sound chip. I find it a little bit grating. But again, on the opening level, it's pretty much the same, really, as the ST and Amiga versions. And again, you do get the map to scroll around the screen with. Moving on to another level, level five. Um, again, you're still only getting one lemming, or one lemming skill, rather, sorry, to demonstrate. I love the graphics on this level with all the blues. So you just got to bash your way through lots of different obstacles. And you're still being taught all the skills of how to play the game at this stage. You can't really go wrong here. And this is the PC version. It's slowed down already here on the V30 processor because we've got 12 lemmings on the screen. And you can see the countdown slowed down. Over to the Amstrad version. The levels are, at this stage, identical really to the PC ST and Amiga versions, but they're smaller. They are smaller, but even so, there's still lots of character there, and it's really nice to play. The Commodore 64 version, again, the level's smaller, you've got that cut down screen, which isn't a problem at this stage, and later on it becomes a little bit irritating. And again, we've just got to bash our way through this netting arrangement here. Mars System version. Again, it's still looking very similar. Just got to work our way through there and just make a route that all our lemmings can get through. And just finishing this off on the Amiga version again. And on the Amiga, you have, it, it's just smoother and nicer. Really, you get more lemmings and it's just, it feels more together. Sticking with the Amiga version. Just to time this right, and you can just blow your way through both the barriers. Still, any, well, actually, no, now you get two scores you get the blocker and the bombers. On the Amstrad version here, nice colours. Still ostensibly the same, just, a, just, just that bit slower. Just that bit slower. I've timed that badly. And I get it right this time. Stop there. Should really use a blocker there. I'm, I'm just lazy. I should use a blocker to trap my lemming in place and then blow him up. The Amstrad and Spectrum version, I think it's fairly obvious they share the same code base. It's just different graphics between the versions, but I think the code is exactly the same. The, the Amstrad version came out about six months after the Spectrum version. One curious thing with the Amstrad is the level codes are broken after a certain point. I noticed this with my copy when I've got it. Hopefully the versions online these days are all fixed. But none of the magazines picked up on this when it was new and gave it absolutely stunning reviews and then <laughs> omitted to mention that the level codes didn't work. And just the same level on the Spectrum. And this is the problem with the two colours on the Spectrum is when you've got lots of lemmings on top of each other and the background... The lemmings are impossible to discern. As they drop down there, you'll see. Again, there's not much of a speed difference between the Spectrum and the Amstrad version. Spectrum is marginally faster, but there's not much. But you can see down the bottom in that pit there, it's just a mass of yellow, which can be irritating when trying to build your way out as you're expected to here. It's just a mass of lemmings. But the thing to be said about the Spectrum version, there's still... A, huge amount of character in those animations they've got the animation across to the a bit versions here here's the st version here's what this level should look like and what you get is all the lemmings are perfectly well defined you see it and that level is just a little bit bigger because of the extra play you've got with the 16-bit versions with all the extra processing power and memory so to the tricky levels now just to see what these look like i'm back on the amiga 1200 this level is very simple. You just need to block the lemming there. And then this lemming can do the rest of the job 
by doing a bit of building and then doing a bit of bashing. And oddly enough, this was one of the levels that your Sinclair gave away on their cover tape. I think they gave away a couple of the fun levels and a couple of these levels, just so you could see the scope of the game. Got to build my bridge there. And down the bottom there on that menu screen, you can speed the release of the, lem of the lemmings up. You've got climbers, floaters, lemmings that explode, blockers, builders, bashers, digger. Uh, well, the digger's going to go diagonally, and then there's other diggers that go straight down. Now we're using a basher just to bash our way through the scenery there. And there's the exit, and I can just go back, and I can blow up the blocker lemming, and then all my lemmings will be released. And back on the PC version... This is running in VGA, and it, again, slow down. I think you really need a 286 to make the most out of this. I know people play this on slower processors than this. And what I did wonder was, does this run any faster in EGA? So I thought I'd give it a go. And no, it doesn't. It's no faster at all. I thought EGA mode, it would run a bit faster. I did try CGA, and unfortunately, I couldn't get that to work. Um, the right files weren't on the disk, so I'm going to cut it off to make it all fit on one floppy or something. It just didn't work. But no, there's, I would have thought there would have been a speed increase taking this down to EGA, but apparently not. Still perfectly playable. Makes it a little bit easier, because you get a little bit more thinking time. But this PC version, yeah, it, it seems quite nice. Over the C64, same level gap appears to be much smaller down there. There are slight discrepancies between the, the versions, especially the 8-bit versions, where some maps are scaled down and, and things are missing. You do realise just how small the C64 levels are compared to the other versions. There's still a lot of character there, but these levels are scaled down, even if you look at how far that is there to the exit. There's some scaling down being, that's been done there. We all fall down to a level that's a good test of control systems on the Mega Drive version here. There's several of these all fall down levels on each of the different difficulty levels or difficulty settings. And all you have to do is each lemming has to be turned into a digger or he dies when he drops down. And it's a really good test of how well the control systems work because you need to be able to select and click very quickly and I find the joypad here just a little bit fiddly once you get to the edge of the screen it needs to scroll because it suddenly becomes, I wouldn't say not intuitive, it just becomes fiddly. And on the Spectrum version where it's a bit slow, you get to the edge and you're on a joystick now and again because the scrolling it's very easy to miss a lemming it went with this sudden jerky scrolling that goes across. It doesn't make the game unplayable. It just makes it far more difficult than it would be if you had a mouse. Back to the ST, and this is what it looks like with the mouse. It's move, click, move, click, move, click, move, click. Dead easy. So easy. Even on the most difficult settings, it, it's a much more straightforward thing to play. And these are other levels. I, I'm not sure this level appears in the other versions. Says when you get further into the game, the 8-bit versions appear to have exclusive le I've done that wrong. Um, exclusive levels. The Sega Mars system also has exclusive levels as well um, called Sega 1 through to 5 and some other alterations. Some of the levels on the 8-bit versions and the PC versions are also missing things like some of the traps because um, some of the levels have things where lemmings walk over them and then things spring up and kill the lemmings and they're missing from the 8-bit versions and the PC version as well. It's all just to fit this into memory really. And again, this is a level called environmentally friendly on the Spectrum. It doesn't appear on the other, on the 16-bit version, certainly. But it does have, it does bear relation to a 16-bit level with things cut out. So they are reusing these assets, but they're altering them and changing them round. And it's just that little gap that lemmings are going to fall down into if you're not careful. And it's difficult to see. So he's got to build a thing over there. And this is the same level, ostensibly, I think, on the Amiga 1200. But you can see there's extra things. It's the same map, 
but there's extra things in there. I could be wrong, but that environmentally friendly level, I don't think is in the 16-bit versions, but I think it's drawn from this level on the Amiga. This level has two release points as well. So Lemmy is coming out at two points at once, and you've got to manage both of them. But this is, uh, I think, on Mayhem setting, so it is one of the, Well, I'd say one of the more difficult... There's a trap there. That's a trap. It's a trap. I have to, you have to build over that so your lemmings don't fall into it. And you only... They're very subtle. You, it's a man-trap type arrangement. But um, you only see it at the last possible moment. You've really got to keep your eyes out for it. And there are a few traps um, on some of the 8-bit versions, some of the more obvious ones, but I don't know if there are... I've not seen them on the Spectrum and Amstrad versions, those more subtle man trap type things. Oh, he's going to, yeah, another lemming went in there. The Amiga version and ST version also have a two player mode. You can have two mice plugged into the machine, and you have to rescue the lemmings of your own colour and rescue more than your opponent. It's quite fun. The 8 bit versions don't have this. I don't think the PC version does either. It's done for the ST and Amiga and possibly the Mega Drive. Not sure. Um, I can't say it's something that ever particularly grabbed me. It's a nice additional feature. You've got two people there. It's not really two-player battles. I don't think of what Lemmings are about. Um, it's a nice idea. Null modem play would be good, but they went for split screen. So perhaps playing online and things like that today would be good fun. So we've really whizzed through all those different versions of Lemmings. There are so many differences between the levels, I couldn't possibly begin to cover them. I've only scratched the surface of all the different versions so you can get a feel of what they look like. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. The Amiga version is the original and the best. It's the most polished. It's the most complete. It's the one to play. But the ST has got a very, very good port. It's pretty much identical. In, well, certainly is in terms of gameplay to the Amiga. It's just missing those tunes and, and just those more detailed colour gradients. But apart from that, it's a very, very good port. Nothing to be ashamed of there for, for ST owners. PC version, cut down. You've only got 80 lemmings on there compared to the 100 on the ST and Amiga. You will need a 286, although perfectly playable on slower machines. It just it is going to slow down when there's a lot of lemmings on the screen. Some of the levels are slightly cut down. Some of the traps are missing. There's a few differences there. But no, fairly competent. And I'd be interested to see what that CGA version looks like. The other 16-bit version is the Mega Drive. Um, I think, well, if the Mega Drive is all you've got, then, yeah, you could put up with it. But I miss the mouse. I find it just a little bit too fiddly with the joypad. If you're a Lemmings completist, yeah, you're going to want it because it's got some changes in there and I think a few different levels and a few things taken out and moved around. So you're going to want it, but I'm not going to play it above the ST and Amiga versions. For a 16-bit version, really, you do want a mouse. Over to the 8-bit versions. We start with the other Sega console, the Master System. I think the Master System version is a little bit dumbed down. They've made some of the levels easier by letting you have less lemmings to complete the level. I don't like those crushed down graphics. It does feel a little bit slow, but it does look nice. And again, it's joypad, and I just find that a little bit fiddly. And really, is the mask system, system you want to be playing lemmings on? Not really. Over to the 3.8-bit computers, we we'll start with the Spectrum, because that's the first version that came out. When I first played the demo on the your Sinclair cover tape, I was really impressed with it. Yes, you initially looked at it and went, oh, it's two colours and how's this going to work? But actually, it works quite well. The problem is, again, it's not just in the lack of mouse, but just when you get to the edge of the screen, that scrolling can be a little bit too jerky and can make some levels that should be very easy on a mouse quite difficult. That said, when I had the demo of this, I had a lot of fun with it. And I had a lot of fun playing it here on the Spectrum now. Same with the Amstrad CPC version. When I got this on my CPC, summer 1992, you loaded it up. The hairs literally went up on the back of my neck when I saw that Psygnosis logo. 
that Psygnosis logo from my friend's 16-bit computers on my Amstrad. The game's full of character, the graphics are very nice, question mark over whether I'd prefer that game in mode 1 and a little bit more detailed graphics. I'll get told off by the guys on CPC Wiki for saying, no, we don't want a specy port, but Amstrad medium resolution 4 colour mode games do not need to be specy ports. And I'm only putting a question mark out there whether that might possibly look nicer. I felt a little bit cheated with this when I had this on my Amstrad because, yeah, when you get to a certain point, the level codes stop working, and then that means you've got to go back and start from your taxing or mayhem level because the level codes aren't working. Commodore 64 version. I know C64 fans are very proud of their version, how many levels it's got. And yeah, none of the 8-bit versions have 100 lemmings in them. Um, they've all got about the same, I think. The, I haven't counted them. It seems to be about 30, something like that on the Amstrad. similar on the Spectrum. I think it's about that 25, 30 on the C64 as well. 14 if you've got a Nintendo Entertainment System. So, you know, let's not start criticising because, you know, there's people out there even worse off than 8-bit computer owners. Massive technical achievement to get this on the C64. Huge credit to the programmers. I have to question that if it was worthwhile doing this in 1994 when the machine was, well, commercially dead, if we're honest. And, well, it was. You couldn't go into a high street shop and buy C64 games. But still, full credit to them. Is it a version I'd pick up and play over even the other 8-bit versions? Mm, might not answer that one because the C64 runners might release their wrath on me. Um, it's a good attempt. That means it's an absolutely seminal game. And when you look at games like this, where they've had to be cut down and compromised to fit onto other systems, you've got to look to the original system. This is an Amiga game. This is an ST game as well, because the gameplay on the ST version is identical, even if the graphics and sound are slightly cut down. But the Amiga and ST are where it's at. All the other systems we've looked at have got good versions of Lemmings. Some of them are huge technical achievements. I'm yeah, expecting the Commodore Amstrad owners especially be hugely proud that these games will be ported their systems so well. Whether you're going to pick those versions over the Amiga and ST version, I think it's down to you. Personally, I wouldn't. I think the ST and Amiga versions are where it's at. <laughs>